Every time, every time we have the Lord's Supper, we say those words, until He comes. We're waiting for Him. We're waiting for Him to return. And it's easy to get focused here. The whole, the whole thing is focused here. When really, come on, come on. We're really, we should be focused up there. And I'm, I'm, just, I'm just as guilty. I'm, I'm not throwing rocks at you. I'm, I'm just as guilty as you are. But we spend all of our time working down here, looking down here, doing things down here. When really we've we got an eternity up there. We need to be very careful that we don't miss that. Amen. 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 And I also admit that the songs and stories about heaven are vague. And I haven't talked to anyone who personally has been to heaven or called me from heaven. But I must believe by faith that a good God will give us a good eternity. Now, do you understand that? A good God is going to give us a good eternity. He created us with desires that we have, okay? So, and he has, we are created in his image. So what we like to do and what we think we want to do has to be part of what we do in heaven. So that we're not just going to go up there and sit on a cloud and play a harp. First of all, I don't know how to play a harp. And you're not going to just walk into heaven and start playing a harp. It ain't going to happen, Jack. I have never seen in my life, I've never seen anybody get carried away in the spirit and go to the piano and play a piece. I have never, I've seen people try it. And they never went anywhere. It just, it just didn't happen. It was just a mess of noise. Now the songs that we sing about him can very, be very confusing. Have you ever went through and looked at them like I did this last week? Sweet Beulah. That just doesn't ring a bell with me. Sweet Beulah. I know it's biblical. Just over the sunset. These are songs that we sing about heaven. Sweet Beulah land, just over the sunset, when I get to those pearly gates, they're going to open wide for me. I'm going to walk in, I'm going to see the Lord. We're going to, no, I don't know. Glory land, now glory land reminds me of Disneyland. And I love Disneyland, so that's, I like that one. Then there's another one, in the mansions bright and blessed on that beautiful shore. Now what are we talking about, a lake? We're talking about, what is this? So when you start looking at the summer land above, there's a song that's called Summer Land Above. I'm going to that sweet summer land above. Come and join me as, you know, I don't know. I'll meet you in the morning by the great riverside. What do you mean in the morning? Is this a river? Of, the songs are confusing. And then it says, sit down by the river. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. See, when we start singing all those things and talking about me, we get confused about we get few confused about heaven. I understand the pearly gates, but I don't think there's pearly gates in the sense that when Jesus is going to meet us, because I, I'm looking for I, I, don't, I don't know what I'm looking for. I, I really don't know what I'm looking for. I just know it's going to be good. Say good. I mean, it's going to be good. I mean, what's good to you may not be good to me. I, I don't, you know, maybe you'd like to go out and live up in the mountain on a cabin up there. I think that would be the most boring life on the face of this earth. Or you might want to go live in an apartment downtown. I wouldn't like that. So sometimes there's that. But it says, I believe this, that a good God is going to give us a good eternity. Amen? Amen. A good God is going to give us a good eternity. The disciples were so convinced of his return, they asked in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, what will be the sign of your coming. Remember, we read that verse last week. What will be the sign of your coming? What will be the sign? This is, this is not what, what's going to happen when you return, but these are the signs that we're going to be seeing before you come. And everybody immediately mentions, well, wars and rumors of wars and all this stuff. But the Bible says in Isaiah, very clearly, that what you see here is you're going to see this here in the end. You will know the end from the beginning. And this is why we've been looking in the last few weeks, last week at least, to the book of Genesis. Turn with me, would you, to, to the book of Mark. Mark 13. Look what it says. Mark 13, 32. Now this is an exhortation to watch. Why do we have to watch? 
Why, why, why do we have to watch it? If God's going to come, He's going to come. That's absolutely true. He's going to come, He's going to come, and nothing you say and nothing you do, you may not believe it, that doesn't matter because He's going to come anyway. But the Bible is very clear about watching. Notice what it says. But of that day, uh, this is uh, Mark 13, 32, but of that day and hour, no one knows. Neither the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Take heed, watch and pray, for you do not know when the time is. Now, then he uses a little story here. It is like a man going to a far country who left his house and gave authority to his servants to each and to each his work and commanded the doorkeeper to watch. Watch, therefore, this is the Lord speaking, for you do not know when the master of the house is coming, in the evening, at midnight, at the crowing of the rooster, or in the morning, lest sud coming suddenly he find you sleeping. And what I say to you, I say to all, watch, 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 be aware. He clearly I, I don't believe there's an argument here. He clearly is telling his disciples that his, his return is going to come suddenly. Suddenly. It's just going to, boom, happen. He uses it like a child that's being born. You can't stop it. But it's, when it starts to come, boom, it's born. The same thing. In 1 Thessalonians, he writes, Paul writes, you know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. Well, that's interesting. It's in 1 Thessalonians 5.2. You should mark it down. You know perfectly, he says this, you know perfectly whew, that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. Now let's just stop here. Look at me just for a moment. What does a thief do? A thief comes unannounced, quietly. He is after the crown jewels, the valuables. So the thief is coming, and he's coming after the valuables. Now, what would be what would be valuable on this earth when Jesus returns? I ask you, what is the most valuable thing on the face of this earth that Jesus would come back for? Let's see. Would it be to come back and to uh, get the gold? No, it isn't. To go to Fort Knox and get all the gold down there? Would it be that? No, it's to come back and get believers. Oh, amen. The Bible says... This treasure in earthen vessels. God looks at you as a treasure, as a special jewel that he's coming back for. In Malachi, he writes, They shall be mine, says the Lord, on that day that I make them my jewels. He's coming back for you and I. He's coming back. Once you get that in your spirit, he is coming back. And he's coming back for believers, that's people, who have asked Jesus Christ to come into their heart. And they've done the best they can to live a Christian life for him. To be, live a life for the Lord. These passages, I, I believe, plant in us an urgency. They do to me, anyway. To be ready. To be aware. To be watching. And, and look, this should, this should not scare the church. This should not put a fright in you. This should not, oh, I'm worried. No, no, no. The, 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 the God is saying that it will come suddenly. That's what he's saying. Be aware of it. He's telling us. He's not trying to catch you unaware. He's not trying to catch you doing something wrong. Or doing it. He's trying to tell you, I'm going to come. I'm going to come as a thief in the night. I'm going to take you away out of here. This is going to be a good. This is going to be a good thing. Amen. Hey, come on! This is going to be a good thing, and he's he's a good God. So what is going to happen on the other side is going to be a good thing. Yeah. Last week we talked about four of the signs. Remember, we talked about brother killing brother. Remember Cain and Abel. Yeah. That was the beginning of it. What do we see today? I just mentioned to you. In the last 60 days, there's been 500, actually 508 people killed in Pakistan alone. Just that little area of Pakistan. What is it? It's brother killing brother. I mean, it's so clear. It's so obvious. It's not us over there killing and shooting and doing them. Sure, we're at war around the world. There's no question about that. 